I V M. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IVM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IVM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach Podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach. And we've been listening to Devda Patnaik in the first part of understanding finances. He's just come out with a brand new book called How to Become Rich, 12 Lessons I Learned from Vedic and Puranic Stories. And we've been discussing these big ideas on understanding finance and money. And now this is part two of that podcast. If you haven't heard the part one, please make sure you do listen to that as well. Enjoy. Devta, that is a very powerful point for multiple reasons. One is the fact that you check it around your birthday. Right. So there is a very close relationship with birthday and death in that sense. Right. One more, you survived one more year around <laughs> the sun. Right. But the whole thing is that how do you make yourself comfortable with the idea of death? I know we might probably going a little bit off, off topic here, but it's so important because you are leaving an inheritance for somebody. It is your gift to the next generation. Like you just said, right in the beginning of this conversation. And very often we just don't even treat it like a gift. We think that we're going to you know, live forever. And it's so strange. Just today in the afternoon, I was having a shower and I was thinking that what if I suddenly you know, had three different life insurances for each of my cousins? I, one thing is for sure, I'm going to die. <laughs> at least they, they'll get some money out of it. You know, might as well at least get yes. think of my death as an investment in that sense. I'm very dark sometimes in these kinds of conversations because it's important to have. No, I don't think it's dark at all. You know, one of the best things that happened, you know, when my mother was very old is we used to discuss death regularly. We used to discuss about her growing old and she was losing control of her body. Um, you know, she was a very powerful woman. She used to take care of everything in our house. She managed the money. My father trusted her with all the money and financial investments. And, you know, then as she grew older, she was losing her memory. Her body was becoming weaker. We felt very sad. But, you know, we would talk about the fact that this is not part of life. And then we would, you know, at one point we would say that, oh, your Yamraj is your boyfriend who has abandoned you. And my mother would burst out laughing and we would make fun and jokes about death because I wanted it to be a, not a terrible thing. And then she would talk about end of life care. She would talk about what she wants to be done with her body, how, whether, and then she, you know, uh, she had a lot of these, uh, uh, you know, what is it called? The, those uh, share certificates. She was, uh, was, she liked the share market for some strange reason, she used to put money in the market and she didn't know how much she had. And she had these papers and she had not done demat, dematerialization. And I, you know, was like, you know, if you don't do that, you'll have trouble because after you go, it'll become a problem. Now you're there, you can sign. Um, and it took about two years, you know, because we talked about all these things and she was thinking, yes, what happens if I die? What will happen to these papers? What will happen to my children? And she, we dematerialized and we realized she had saved a large amount of money on her own, uh, you know, with no knowledge of the stock market, just over the years, putting some money there and here. And I think this conversation of death with her calmed her down. It was not frightening at all. Death became a friend. And it became, we when, when she passed finally, um, you know, my siblings, my sisters and I, we were like, we didn't fight over anything. We, everything was, we knew what to do. We knew what she, how she wanted her body to be treated. We performed all the ceremonies with so much of grace and dignity. We had a good time as a family that she, you know, we had talked about all these things. And I think the stress of death was taken away from our lives. I think these are important conversations to have. It's not morbid at all. Uh, it's, uh, I think, like health matters, you know, when you have a stomach upset, you have to talk about your stomach upset. When you have a mental breakdown, you have to talk about your mental breakdown. We are all going to die and it's okay to talk about death. And that's why, you know, right now, um, after a few days, there will be Ganesh Chaturthi and after that, the Shraad, 15 days of Shraad. And I think traditionally every year, 15 days was given for us to talk about ancestors. You know, in all cultures around the world, there is, you know, a, a, a festival or a day dedicated to the dead. I think that's a good custom to remind everyone that you know you are not immortal. It's and it's death is not a terrible thing. It's okay, and I, you should think about the living at that time. Should you die? I mean, God forbid, act, you know, uh, suddenly it can happen to a young person. It can happen to an old person. It can happen to anyone. How do you prepare yourself? You know, it's like, um, does your husband know to cook? Because one of the wife dies. And, you know, these men who don't know how to cook suddenly feel, oh my God, and this kind of silliness. 
And I think these kind of things we have to learn. Um, uh, it prepares us. It's de-risking. You know? It's like a business you de-risk yourself. So um, I think talking about Yamraj and death and will is very, very important. It's very, very important. And I think if nothing else, at least during Shrad or you know, whenever you're having these Chinese have these ghost day. They have a ghost day when you celebrate uh, ghosts. You burn money for ghosts. It's a very famous fe festival in Singapore. And uh, I was like, that's a great ceremony. We should talk about the dead. We should talk about ancestors. And we should know that one day we'll be ancestors too. Beautiful. In fact, we have in our Parsi community, we have uh, muktads, which are that. And it reminds me of a very cute story with my 92-year-old grandparents. So 92, in my Parsis, right? We lived yeah. up till that. So my 92-year-old grandmother is teaching my grandfather how to make chai. And he's like, why you want me to teach me now at 92? And she's like, no, no, if I die before you, then who's going to make tea for you? And it was, and it's exactly what you were saying. Who's going to learn about cooking? And, and that morning chai is like the most important thing in anybody's yes. life, right? So how to make the perfect chai. And, you know, there's another very important conversation that people don't have. And that is coming back to the book about money. People just don't talk about money. It's something that fascinates me because I come from a business family. So dinner table conversation was money. Yes. But many homes don't even know what the other person's salary is, family member's salary is. They don't discuss money. They don't discuss anything. Is there any uh, thing that we can learn about discussing money? How to converse about it? How to share about it? Or should you or should you not? I think money and death are very closely related. We don't talk about death. We don't talk about money. Money is a life-giving principle. And death, of course, is the end of life. And it's funny why we don't talk about it. Because survival, in order to survive in this world... We need goods and services. And in order to get goods and services, we need money. And for that money, we have to give goods and services. So it's a very simple thing, really, if you think about it from a logical point of view. But I think somewhere in our minds, money is evil. Don't be commercial. Especially Indians have this thing about don't be commercial. You know, this, we look down on the traders and we look down on business people. India has a very strange way in that way. And you worship Lakshmi. We are a country which worships Lakshmi. If money falls on the ground, we are like, oh my God, paisa gira hai ground ke, but you don't put your foot on it. You know, all these kind of things are there. And I think it's because we don't, uh, we have not normalized these things. We made this very exotic. And if children are not taught, you shouldn't, you know, it's the poor people are forced to think about money because money is not there. And uh, rich people are thinking about money because there's so much of money. But I think really the story is between the two. Because if you understand the concept of swarg, where you have money to take care of your life and extra, and narg, when you don't have enough to take care of your life, these are states of mind, states of existence. And all our festivals, whether it's Diwali, whether it is Onam, whether it is Vishu, whether it, all these festivals are fertility festivals, you know, um, where you uh, invite people, uh, invite Lakshmi to the house. And um, I think this is why we make a mistake. We think, you know, padhai karo. Are, padhai kyu kar rahe ho? Padhai kar rahe ho because you want a set of skills that will make you valuable in the business, in the market. And um, it's something that is, I don't think this connection is made. School is connected to vocation. And that's why we don't really educate ourselves. You know, we go to school for a job, but we don't really read, say, oh, why should I learn literature? That's to make you a better person. That's not to get you a job. There are two parts to education. One part is to get you a job. And the other part is to make you a better person, well-read, familiar with music, and with the arts. You know, that's why Indians don't go to museums. We don't go to art collections because we have not been educated. We have been told, padai karo, job milega. And that's a very foolish way to look at uh, education. Um, and I think that's why we don't understand Saraswati properly. We don't understand Lakshmi properly. And that, perhaps that's why we are a poor country. We are a poor, poor country because we really have not understood Lakshmi and Saraswati who are the goddesses of India. And without whom even, you know, Riddhi Siddhi of Siddhi Vinayak is basically Lakshmi and Saraswati, your intellectual and your uh, material benefit. This is unfortunate in our country. In our country, we really don't talk about money. And I'm glad you are asking me these because when people talk to me, they only want to know about soul and spirit and moksha and maya. And I bring them back to Lakshmi. And I'm like, you know what? Let's talk about Lakshmi. Because if you can't do charity, you are not spiritual. If you are not generous, you're not investing in other people, you are not spiritual at all. Everything else is nonsense. And in order to invest in others, you need extra resources. And you can only have extra resources when you have enough for yourself. So the conversation really comes down to Lakshmi. 
and um, you know words like mangal shubh all this means you know shubh and mangal uh, basically mean the arrival of lakshmi when you have uh, wealth to satisfy your needs and the needs of other people you know i i recently had done a podcast on how to become more interesting just as a thought because it's so inter- because mo- many people don't know how to have conversations because they don't know enough you know like what you're talking about saraswati there's no knowledge there's no information coming in so how will you have conversations going out yes you know um, uh, the thing is because we are not curious we go to schools saying padhai karo we are not saying seek what curiosity to be curious if you are curious then automatically lakshmi and saraswati will enter your life because you are curious about how money walks into your life and then you start going deeper and deeper because ultimately as human beings we have to feed ourselves and if you have at the very basic core level the morning chai how do i always tell people khana kahan se aaya let's talk about how does food come to my table and you will learn about cooking you will learn about Uh, your pantry you will learn about how you store food how does supply chain work how do you go to the kirana you understand about wholesale business you learn about farming you learn about so many things just by being one question how does this cup of chai come to my table and that's how you study if you don't study it that way you don't make it interesting and then lakshmi saraswati never come into your life this becoming curious about the things around you like you said how did this coffee come how did this chai come how is how is everyone going to work in the morning right those simple things can lead you to an idea that can give you both saraswati and lakshmi in that sense because it gives you wisdom and an opportunity you might suddenly seeing that oh these guys need sandwiches in the morning let me see what i can do for them for him you see opportunities that see that's the whole thing uh, in, in the word is darshan karo you know the indian gods have these large eyes and i was in because they're looking they are curious they are interested they want to know what's going on in this world i think they are only interested in what bollywood stars are doing and what politicians are doing and wasting our time trying to figure out who slept with whom who killed whom who murdered whom what is taliban doing what is afghan i mean i think those news is not going to help you it's great to, for a 5 minute conversation for time pass but i think we should focus on living our lives better and i think being curious about you know how do i improve my health how do i improve my house how do i uh, have a, a better meal how do i have a better walk how do i have a better friend um, i think that is should be the pursuit there that you know you save this conversation to something that i was really dying to ask you which is how did you become curious about all the things that you studied and then started writing about because these are two important habits one is information coming into you you processing it and then you being able to put it out in in a way that we can understand so where did this start from so um you see i used to uh, i'll talk about the second part first you know my father uh, did his mba in new york before iams were started in india um so iam came to india in the 1960s and my father did his mba in new york university in the 50s and when he came to india he was jobless because nobody knew what an mba was Right, that's hilarious. Then, okay. Yeah, and then he became a marketing consultant. He did quite well. Um, and I told my father one day, "The why don't you write about your life? Because there's so much of you know this whole journey that you keep telling us in our family conversations. Don't you think people would love to know about it?" And he said, "That's a good, very good idea." But he would never write down. Hmm. And then he passed. And I realized that all the knowledge my father had and acquired, going to America, coming to India, uh, this fa- fabulous stories that he told us about work and clients and customers and talking to you know his business. He didn't come from a business family; came from Odisha. He didn't know anything about consulting and marketing and all these things. And I said, all that knowledge is gone. You know, that was one. And I was like, I felt sad. And then when I was reading the Ramayana and Mahabharata, I realized both Ramayana and Mahabharata end with knowledge transmission. Mm-hmm. So Bhishma, when he dies, spends about two chapters out of eighteen chapters of the Mahabharata. Two chapters are knowledge transmission. The Bhishma is passing on all his knowledge to the Pandavas. Krishna is saying, "You're going to die. Why don't you pass on all your knowledge?" And the same thing happens in the Ramayana. In the Ramayana, um, you know, Ravan when he's dying, uh, uh, Ram looks at Lakshman and says, "You know, when he dies." he leave behind all his wealth but he'll take away all his knowledge so why don't you engage in a conversation with him and take the knowledge from him this knowledge how do you transmit knowledge 
if you don't you can carry your death takes away knowledge death does not take away lakshmi but it takes away saraswati and only now we are writing books and we have got these information but everything cannot be captured right everything cannot be captured in books so this is a, which struck me very strongly early in my life and i always said knowledge has to be transmitted so that's one bug i have anything i hear anything i listen to any idea that i have i want to transmit it and therefore you know i've now written what 50 books 1000 articles everything i i'm continuously transmitting knowledge for me that's very important the second is of course my interest in mythology is everybody kept telling that you know hamare shastron mein bahut kuch likha hai there's a lot of knowledge in our scriptures and i would keep saying can you tell me three points you know give me three points i mean can you just like you do you are talking about habits can i implement it now so i would ask people acha to bolo na and they will say oh and nothing it's all like this exotic far away magical things in vedas and puranas and shastras and i'm like tell me three things or they would tell me things like you know economics is taught by chanakya arthashastra i said oh is it true let me read arthashastra and i read it i'm like no that's not economics at all he doesn't talk economics he's talking about political economy he's talking about how a king should make money he is not interested in how you and i should make money he is talking about how the raja should make money i said that's not the same thing i'm like oh that is not so people are talking out of the hat and they're not actually reading and uh, even today when i talk about mythology people say devda tum economics ke bare mein kaise baat karte ho i said because lakshmi is wealth to jab lakshmi ke bare mein hum padhte hain when we read about lakshmi in our scriptures we learn about economics learn about saraswati you learn about knowledge so i realize that people don't they talk a lot but they don't actually read and that's where curiosity became important i started asking why do festivals are held and you know the deeper i went it became a well of knowledge everything opened up something else and opened up something else and india is particularly a complex country we have a lot of knowledge in oral traditions and rituals and symbols and i was like oh my god i'm in aladdin's cave you know i've got like this and i'm not happy just enjoying it i want to share it with the world and monetize the process so you know that's the service i decided to give the world i will give okay you don't have time to read the books i'll read the books i will simplify it and give it to you in exchange you give me money so i gave a service to the world and the world rewarded me for it so it was a yagya so i will do all the work and i'll make it accessible to you in exchange you call me for a lecture you buy my book you read my columns and that's what i did i just did yagya and it became so you know um i combined lakshmi and saraswati so curiosity also meant oh if i find something new i'll get a new article new column new idea which i can monetize so you know i i i blended lakshmi and saraswati together over time and i think that's what happened i think um, that's what curiosity is all about curiosity is intellectual hunger there's physical hunger and there's intellectual hunger and i have intellectual hunger as much as physical hunger yes i want a house a car i want the good things in life that's material but i also want good ideas i want to learn what the world has to offer we're going to take a quick break see you on the other side hey everybody it's been another great week on the ivm podcast network are the great values of our constitution meant to be talked about by great men but not lived on the longest constitution priya tells us about domestic violence laws in india and the many kinds of violence inflicted on women Here's a fun conversation about online dating apps on Cyrus says as Cyrus is joined by Snehal Khanor, co-founder and CEO of Truly Madly. On the wire talks the dart is in discussion with Audrey Trishke, historian of South Asia and associate professor at Rutgers University. They discuss troll culture and the hate she received for her allegedly anti-Hindu views. On audio gan Kedar and Abhinit get some design perspective from Navneet Nair, director of design at PhonePay. And on Tere Mere Raaste Kesho takes us to Hyderabad, a melting pot of cuisine and culture. Do follow us on social media where IVM podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. And remember if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend that is the most helpful thing that you could do to help us out. And finally this week we'd like to thank our sponsors on the network, Cred, Bank of Baroda, Quarter, CoinSwitch, Kuber and Intel V Pro. We really do appreciate the support. This is what makes it possible. Welcome back. Let's jump into the conversation. Are there aspects of what you learned about not becoming materialistic as well? Because since we're talking about money and there is a whole movement towards, you know, minimalism, not materialism, and all of that, what have you come across with it? So I think you know uh, we have to balance yoga and bhog. One is not superior to the other. Bhog is enjoyment of life, and yoga is restraint and contentment. Right. So you have to have the good things in life, and but you have to restrain and contentment. 
it doesn't mean you stop lakshmi from coming it means when the lakshmi comes to you you don't store you share so it's very different people think oh i'm not going to do any job i'm not going to work so i'm not spiritual no 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 that's not spiritual spiritual is lakshmi will come but you will tell you know what lakshmi i don't want you i'm content i will give it to someone else this i will not store you i will share you this is spirituality when you are able to share more than store so we have to look at it from an economic lens otherwise it's also lazy i'm lazy oh i'm content i don't want to do any work but you're not helping anyone in the world you're just lazy and laziness is not spirituality no not at all in fact when you actually go down that route of of sharing and constantly giving away you actually work harder than you ever worked in your life it's exactly. very it's it's hilarious how that happens but you actually work far more because now you're actually driven by something that is not uh monetizable you're and driven by something you're getting different. this joy that you get when you're sort of give, helping people when you know when they somebody reads a book or gets your service that kind of joy is a very different kind of joy and i think this ability is where spirituality comes in so i saw spirituality not as the app denial of lakshmi but as the sharing of lakshmi that for me otherwise if to have to say no i don't look at lakshmi at all then you're not looking at the world the world needs lakshmi otherwise how will it survive how will people eat they'll starve and die right now the economy is in a bad shape create jobs for people you know uh, the more you invest in the market the more uh, jobs you create and the more jobs you create people will have a livelihood you know the, i want young boys and girls to have livelihood otherwise they'll end up becoming criminals Correct. and then so oh, there are so many chores and the people are not working there is a mess in the system you know people are when you don't have jobs then empty minds the devil's workshop you start doing stupid things foolish things and then the society is not a healthy place and i think in one of your books and you had read about how people don't welcome lakshmi and still at that same time complain about not having her yes. right they are like you're not welcoming the person in you're saying that no 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 money is not good money is not good right that is not welcoming the person in how is she ever going to come into your life at the same time you're grumbling about not having enough you know many people often tell me things like dev that you are very commercial hmm. i say let me translate that to you what you're saying is that i adore lakshmi you don't so if you don't adore lakshmi she won't come into your house and then who will pay your bills because in in hinduism for example there's a concept of rid rid is debt we are all in debt and we exist to repay these debts we owe things to our family we owe things to society society is taking care of us what are we giving back to society these new words now is giving back but in ancient manusmriti and all they'll say the whole purpose of life is to repay debt you will not get moksha till you repay all your debts because there's no liberation unless you repay your debts we are all indebted to society at large to nature to culture to family to friends to institutions and to repay debt you have to invest in them so this whole idea that i'm not commercial is very selfish i'm like what do you what do you mean you're not commercial how if you don't create jobs for people where will people get jobs from it's not the job of the tatas or birlas or ambanis or adanis to create jobs they are creating okay millions of jobs maybe but not enough how many jobs have you created in your lifetime have you created at least one job two jobs five jobs sustainable jobs so then comes first is job then comes sustainable jobs then comes you know all kinds of questions will emerge giving you know a part time salary to your cook or a cleaner is not really a sustainable job you know so you have to ask those difficult questions uh, and then the, you know then comes the conversations i think we don't do that enough in our country that's why we are poor hum hmm. lakshmi ko celebrate nahi karte hmm. we don't realize economics is about lakshmi her uska aana uska jana hmm. she comes and she goes if your economy is down it means she is leaving which means you are in naraka if your economy is good it means she is coming and you have got to swarg and i would rather create swarg than naraka such important principles you know and especially i love the uh, the correlation between saraswati and lakshmi because i keep saying that and so many habits around this which are the best investments you can make are the investments in yourself right saraswati is ultimately an investment in yourself that you're making right with, with so the knowledge wisdom you, know, you look at levels of it so most people think of saraswati as going to school and colleges and they think of it as vocational training like i learned maths i learned engineering i learned medicine to do a job that is vidya lakshmi knowledge that enables you to have a set of skills to provide services that gives you money 
Hmm. That's one type of Saraswati. The other type of Saraswati is figuring out yourself, being curious about yourself, identifying why are you so greedy? Why are you so jealous? Why are you so selfish? Why are you so nasty? Why are you not generous? What stops you from being generous? What stops you from being kind? What stops you from being a nice person? Why do you need to be nasty? You know, these questions we don't ask ourselves. And if you don't ask these questions, uh, then uh, you will not be, you will not grow as a person. Your wealth will grow, but you will not grow. And I think that is the Saraswati level. So I say level one and level two. We focus too much on level one. Ki I am kar diya, um, IIT kar diya, I've got these qualifications. Or, you know, some people say, I didn't go to school, but I made a big business. I'm a big businessman. I mean, you're still talking in terms of making money. That, But what's your relationship with your money? Are you storing it for yourself or you're sharing it? Why are you storing it? If you're storing it, are you so insecure? How much money do you have? 5,000 crores. What are you going to do? You'll never spend 5,000 crores in your entire life. You know, I know people who are 80 years old who have got 100 crores in the bank and they'll still sit capital coma touch. Karo. And you're like, you're 80 years old. Even if you live till 100, you will not spend. Even if you spend one crore every month, you won't spend so much. And, you'll, and then you realize how foolish they are. They're storing and storing and not sharing. And I think that's when you realize, oh, Saraswati has not made you, spiritual upliftment has not happened. And generosity for me is a very important habit. If you don't develop, it's a very difficult habit. Very difficult. It's very difficult to be generous. Uh, we always are generous with, you know, jo extra paisa hai. Being generous is a mindset. And that... How do you define it? Um, the ability to satisfy other people's hunger. So when I can satisfy my hunger, I can satisfy your hunger. When I'm focusing on your hunger, I have entered the realm of generosity. And I'm figuring out. And then, of course, in generosity, there is more things. It can be, I just give you food or I help you earn a living. So that, so that's why I say when investment and generosity come together, then it's magic. So powerful. I, I know so many stories of people, like you said, 1,000 crores in the bank, 100,000 crores in the bank, but they still feel they don't have any money to spend. Yes. They, they are rich, but living again in health, right? So it's so it, interesting. Objectively, they are in swarga. The whole world thinks they are in swarga, but in their minds, they are in nark. Mm. And, that, and that is because they have not invested in the, their own growth spiritually. And, you know, and as I said, spiritual is key indicator. Hai. Are you thinking of other people's hunger? Are you thinking of their finances? Mm. You know, the Tata Trust, for example, or these big trusts and all that. Somebody decided, you know what? We have to put this money aside to share because we have made enough. You know, everybody has made enough. They're like, okay, we have made enough. What do we do with this extra money? Let's find a way to churn it. And they're always businessmen. You're always churning it. It's not, it's not a black hole. It's not somewhere you just, ha, hum charity karke paisa ge upar, diamonds de denge. No, 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 no. That is not, nature doesn't function like that. Nature is always investing. Nature does not, you know, even a tree which falls in the forest will be eaten by maggots and lots of, everything is used. So it's not like a waste of things. So everything's cyclical and you have to keep investing. So I like that idea of yagya because it is cyclical. It's about give and receive, receive and give and give and receive. And same thing applies to charity. The more charitable you are, the kinder society you create. The kinder society you create. Did that any last thoughts that you have on what you would like to share? Anything that we missed out that you feel is important? I think... Um, you know, there's one idea which I always tell people that all whenever we're eating achar, you know, uh, it's uh, it's a thing. You know, Annapurna's achar, I call it. So even you know, I I tell people uh, whenever you eat a fruit, there is a fruit part to it and there's a seed part to it, and then there's this achar business, and really it's about our lives, right? When you earn salary, you want to enjoy it. That's the flesh of the fruit. So you eat the fruit. But if you were to pickle a part of it, you can enjoy it a few days later when the fruit is in short supply. So mangoes are great in summer, but in winter, I can get the achar. And that's your really your short-term savings. For your holiday, for your little expenses, for your birthday gifts, for your parties, which you have every year, which you can predictable expenses. And then you have the little seed inside the fruit, which you have to plant in a forest, which will turn into a tree. And that tree will become a bare fruit. And that'll, that's your investments. 
so look at your salary as this fruit and always eat a bit of it pickle a bit of it and sow the seed for the future and i think that's the thought that i would like people to live behind leave behind so whenever you eat a pickle when you ever eat fruit look at this phal beej or achar i'm clapping on this side i love it just summarized summarizes finance and everything just so beautifully in a mango <laughs> achar love the tha devdat thank you thank you thank you so much for coming and being a part of the habit coach podcast like i said big 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 fanboy moment for me and this conversation was so interesting especially introspective for part of my life that i'm on currently so absolutely brilliant is that how can people follow you get in touch with you learn more about what you do so the easiest way is um to be part of uh, i have got a, a facebook page which is devdat myth that's the handle it is also instagram devdat myth d v d u w t m y t h um and of course uh, i have my website devdat.com so these are the three places that you can and i you know i don't co- allow commenters in my facebook <laughs> because you know you have all all kinds of spammers and everything so uh, just follow that and pick and choose what you like i love it and you become very active on instagram recently through this lockdown i, I was noticing yeah, all the little but i'm now controlling myself too much of bhog has happened now yoga is required i need to pull back <laughs> i've got a little crazy you know i love I... your post it notes and your little writings on them <laughs> superb <laughs> thank you so much thank you for notes thank you so much for coming loved it bye bye if you like this podcast don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network you can listen to us on the ivm podcast app or ivmpodcast.com you can also follow us on social media we are at ivm podcast on twitter and instagram if you want to reach out to me i am ashtin doc on twitter and instagram you can find lots more information on my website awesome180.com or check out different content on my youtube channel called a w e s o m e 180 that's awesome180 I V M